In this video, I'm gonna help you choose the correct cheap laptop for your needs. I'm gonna have some recommendations throughout the video, but I want you to understand what you're purchasing and why you're purchasing it and making sure that it fits your specific use case. A lot of times tech reviewers like myself are getting new products to review and brands will send us the more premium versions of their products and we rarely get the more cheaper budget from the options. And so it's hard to take the premium presentation from these tech reviewers and then delineate it down into what is a good purchasing option for a cheap laptop. That's the goal of this video. Let's get into it. We're going to talk about the RAM, processor, operating system, and the storage of a laptop to make sure you have the best fit for your needs, as well as some of the features that come with cheap laptops versus more premium laptops. Let's go ahead and start with Chromebooks. In general, these are going to be the cheapest laptops from MSRP standpoint, because when you think about getting the cheapest laptop, there are laptops that are cheap, and that's the standard price. And then there are nicer laptops that are just simply on sale. And we're gonna look at both of those as we go throughout this video. Where we're gonna start right now is Chromebooks. Now Chromebooks by standard definition are gonna be the cheapest laptops available on the market from an MSRP standpoint. So what we have here is a Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5i. Now the cool thing about this laptop is it has a 2K touchscreen display, eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. It has an i3-1315U, it's a 14 inch two in one laptop. Now, the 2K display is definitely a nice upgrade on this laptop. However, it is going to be a lower color gamut range display. So it's not gonna be highly color accurate and have a wide color gamut range. So this would not make sense for somebody wanting to do very accurate color correction. Google Chromebooks, are going to be more for people who are writing business proposals in school, writing emails, writing papers, very basic tasks. Uh, you know, getting on Zoom calls, communicating with different staff. It's not going to be a device that you're going to use in order to say download Adobe Photoshop or download Affinity Photo or you know download really any unique app that would be available on a Windows device. If you want any sort of application, you will have to go to the Chrome store and search to see if they have it. So I'm gonna go ahead and search Adobe Photoshop. And as you can see, Adobe Photoshop is not available. Let's search another one that's popular with amongst uh, my community, Affinity. So Affinity Photo is not available, but these other tools are available for you to use. If I go to the main Chrome store and I click Art and Design, there are a number of creative tools that you can download and use. But what happens is it's really up to the discretion of apps that people have created in the Chrome store. You can't just download any application that's been created for a Windows device because it is technically not a Windows device. It is a Chrome device. So that's one thing that I think people should really be aware of when they're looking for cheap laptops. A Chromebook has a very specific use case. To me, it's for students, for business owners, for people who are just doing leisure time, streaming video, sending emails, browsing the web. They are great budget-friendly devices. And this Lenovo IdeaPad, 2K touch with an Intel i3, 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage is a fantastic buy for somebody looking for a device like that. Now, as we're going through this video, I've put links in the description below to check the live pricing. And if you wanna make a purchase, please use those links. It will give me a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, the next one I'm gonna look at here is going to be the Asus VivoBook 14 has a very similar processor at the i3-1215U, eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Now you can see that this laptop is normally $429, but it's on sale for $249. So this would be a great buy for somebody who wants to still have a budget-friendly laptop, but would also like access to the larger ecosystem of applications available to the Windows x86 platform. So that's basically just like a standard Windows laptop. So you can go on anywhere and download applications from the internet and use them on your device. So that'd be Adobe Photoshop, Affinity Photo. You can download any standard application. Now let's go ahead and talk about RAM before we move on to different laptops. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. Now you can see both of these laptops here have eight gigs of RAM, okay? This is a good place to be for a cheap laptop. When you open up 
Chrome, say Google Chrome, your web browser, when you open up, say Spotify, if you have that opened up. And then you're in Google Chrome and you're opening up multiple tabs, multiple windows, browser windows. You're going to be starting to use RAM. Let's say you have 30 tabs open and you have two browsers. So 15 on one, 15 on the other, you know, multiple windows open. That's gonna probably use anywhere from four to six gigs of RAM. I know because I do that a lot when I'm doing research and it really starts to slow my computer down. And so if you're somebody who will have a lot of tabs open, who's gonna wanna listen to music and be doing research and maybe writing a paper at the same time, eight gigs for me is a great baseline to be at. If you're looking for a cheap laptop and has four gigs of RAM, I personally in this day and age would not recommend that. I just think you'll end up bottlenecking and slowing down your computer. You won't have as smooth of a workflow because you will not have the opportunity to be to do a lot of multitasking. So eight gigs of RAM, I think is a great starting point. And like I said, you can see that in both this Vivo book and this Chromebook, the, the Lenovo idea pad. Now, another thing to consider is the storage. Now, storage is not very important in this day and age if you're somebody who's not going to be working with files on your device. So consider this. If you're not going to be bringing in photos and editing them on your device, then you don't need a lot of storage. If you're not going to be saving documents to your device, you don't need a lot of storage. Personally, I don't do any document creation locally. Everything takes place for myself on the Google drive cloud. And so this makes the Chromebook a really great option because you can go ahead and, you know, have the standard price of $499. If this goes on sale, it'll be even less. And you can take care of all your document creation, all of your presentation creation, everything that you need can take place in the cloud. And therefore the 128 gigs of storage is not a bottleneck. However, if you're somebody, like I said, who's going to be editing photos or videos or doing document document creation natively on your device, that will fill up your storage and the 128 gigs will go rather quickly. Because I don't know if you knew this, but the operating system alone on some of these devices can be, it can be anywhere from 30 to 60 gigs of RAM when you get everything loaded up that you need on your device. It, it can take up that much storage. So then you're left with only 100 gigs and, and that can be eaten up rather quickly. Okay, as we're moving forward, let's go ahead next and look at the HP 15. This is a touchscreen laptop, and this is going to have 8 gigs of RAM, which is a great place to start. But then also, this laptop is going to come with 250 gig, 256 gigs of solid-state storage. Now, this laptop is normally around $500, so this is technically a laptop that is on sale. Not necessarily a cheap laptop, but a laptop that's on sale, okay? So this is a good price point, and it comes with a... Let's see what the... Um, processor is. It's a 12th generation i3. So it's going to be the same processor that we saw here with this Vivo book. However, you're going to have a bit of an upgrade from the storage standpoint. Okay. Now this is going to be a full HD or less screen, which is why the Chromebook is more of a premium cheap laptop compared to this HP, right? The Chromebook has a 2K touchscreen display. The HP has a touchscreen, but it's going to be more of a full HD or less. And so what you're going to get is a better or higher resolution with this laptop. So you're starting to be able to delineate between a cheap laptop uh, and then uh, uh, from Windows and a cheap laptop from Chrome. Chrome is always going to be cheaper in general and have a little bit nicer features because the operating system and Google itself charges less for the device. Okay, next thing we're going to move up to is the Lenovo Flex 5i 14 Full HD. Okay, this is a very, very good comparison between the Lenovo Windows version that we're looking at here and the Chromebook. Okay, so as you can see, it was normally $549. We have 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD with the i3 1215U. Now look, this is a full HD laptop. It has a tiny bit more storage, but it's a hundred, uh, but it's about fifty dollars more from a retail standpoint than the Chromebook would be. So this helps you kind of start to define the difference between the laptops, talking Chromebook and Windows laptop. Now you can upgrade this to five twelve uh, on Best Buy's website, but that immediately takes you up to the six hundred and seventy nine dollars. And it gives you a, a slightly different processor. So it gives you an i5 versus the i3. Now, the next laptop we're going to be looking at here is going to be moving towards a more premium laptop 
you can see we have a faster processor and we have 16 gigs of RAM. So if you're somebody who really likes to do a lot of multitasking, 16 gigs of RAM is going to be much better, especially if you're somebody who is interested in using Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign, uh, GIMP, these different photo manipulation or photo editing tools that take more computer power in order to run. If you open up Photoshop or GIMP or some sort of editing tool, let's say maybe Adobe Lightroom, what you'll be doing is you'll be pulling anywhere from, from four to six gigs of RAM. From there, you open up Google Chrome. If you have a lot of tabs open, another four to six gigs of RAM. Let's say you turn on some music, about two-ish gigs of RAM. So right there, you've already chewed through that eight gigs of RAM. And so by going ahead and choosing the cheaper laptop by $79, you will be bottlenecked and have a poor performance experience. So if I, you went ahead and choose this laptop for $400, it has less RAM, less storage, especially if you're considering photo editing, you need more storage versus choosing the laptop that's about $79 more and getting the extra RAM, getting the extra performance from the CPU and getting the extra storage. Okay. That can make a big difference. $79 can really make a difference in the computer that you'll be using. Now we're still not looking at a, a screen that is high in color gamut range, high in color accuracy. Um, that's something that would come later. Uh, as you get more move up in the budget price point. So the budget laptops are going to have lower color gamut range, lower color accuracy, and lower resolution. So maybe a full HD screen versus a 2K or 4K display. Okay, also one thing that's going to change is you're going to see better build materials. So I have here before me an Asus VivoBook. This is going to be an all-aluminum laptop, but it's going to come in at about $899 um, on sale. Regular retail value of these is about 1,050, but this has an OLED display as well. So it's going to have hundred percent color accuracy for sRGB, 98% for Adobe RGB and like 99 for DCI P3. So very color accurate. It's also going to have 16 gigs of Ram and the latest Intel core ultra nine CPU, which is very powerful. Um, so this would be a great, like 4k video editing balls to the walls, Photoshop laptop. And that's kind of the use case you'll be looking at. So some differences there. Now, when we move on to the next laptop in the lineup, the Yoga 7 2-in-1. This is a 2.2K display, has a touchscreen, and it's going to be the i7-1355U with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 SSD. Now, this laptop is going to have 100% sRGB color gamut range, hence the higher price point. So it adds quite a bit of money to put a really color accurate display. It makes laptops substantially cheaper to just go with a basic display that's just not color accurate. It doesn't go through all the rigorous tests and protocol in order to increase that color accuracy. It's just a more budget-friendly panel. And so that's going to be a big difference. It's also going to be an aluminum build quality rather than plastic. And so that's really where you're paying for the premium. So if you don't need all of that, then this would be a waste of money. You could easily go down to $479, get 16 gigs of RAM, 512 storage, and have a laptop that performs very well. So this is where you're, it helps you understand between cheap, budget, premium, why things cost more, and so you don't have to waste your money or, or spend the wrong money in the wrong places. All right, the next thing I want to look at is going to be the uh, HP Victus. This is a gaming laptop with a dedicated GPU. And I'm going to show you, this is one of the more budget-friendly gaming laptops that are available. This one is $599 on sale. Uh, normally it's $799. This comes with an RTX 2050. This is probably the most budget-friendly GPU that money can buy. And it has the Ryzen 5 7535HS with 8 gigs of RAM. Now, the cool thing about this laptop is... Once you purchase it, you could go ahead and pull the bottom cover off yourself and upgrade the RAM if you would want to increase that performance over time. But this would be a great entry level place if you're somebody who likes to game lightly. That GPU will provide you some performance, but you're not going to be able to play at you know max frames per second. You might have to drop the game down to be lower frames per second. Uh, if you're editing video, you'll probably be limited to 4K. You probably won't be editing 6K video. Um, it's going, going to be a true budget-friendly option. It's going to be a non-color accurate display. It's going to be full HD. It's going to be plastic build quality. So again, a budget-friendly entry, but still a great laptop. Now, the next thing we can do is move up to a more powerful processor, more storage, and more RAM. 
So we have the RT, as well as uh, more GPU performance, RTX 4050. So this is their second bump up uh, from the RTX series from NVIDIA for the GPU. So again, we have the plastic build quality, the Victus. However, we have a more powerful processor. We have a higher refresh rate for the screen. So it's going to be smoother as you're playing the game. And you're going to have a higher frames per second because you have a more powerful GPU. We're still going to have the plastic build quality. We're still going to have the low color accuracy, full HD screen, um, but it will be a better performer when you're in the game. Uh, now let's move up to something a bit more premium. This is going to be the Lenovo Legion Slim 5. You can see it's normally $1,579 on sale for $1,000. So it's a good price point for the device being that it's more premium. We'll have aluminum on the device. So it's going to have better build materials compared to the plastic on the HP Victus. It's going to have the Ryzen 7 7840HS, Ryzen 7 7840HS, 16 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 4060. So we're moving up to more of a mid-tier GPU. The display is also something that's going to be very high quality. With an OLED display, it's going to have high color accuracy. So 99% sRGB, uh, probably 80% to 90% Adobe RGB, and again, 80 to 90% DCI-P3. Uh, also, one terabyte of storage. So if you're video editing or photo editing, this device will have plenty of room to take care of those projects internally on the device. You're also going to have a bit more premium feel on the keyboard and trackpad as you move up in price. You're going to have less plasticky, you know, kind of chiclet feeling keys, and the keys might have more of a soft touch feel. They might be quieter. Um, things will be assembled better. So as you move up the sliding scale, that's what you'll experience as you move up in your budget price point. Now, the last thing we would be looking at, of course, is, say, a MacBook Air. So when you're getting something like the, you know, MacBook Air 13 M2, this is going to be really the entry-level laptop. You have 8 gigs of RAM, 270, 256 storage, and it's going to have a good color accurate display because Apple really doesn't offer a affordable version of their laptops. It's either kind of the base level entry with all the right stuff, but just lower performance, or you get the premium laptop with all the performance. So that's really the nice thing about Apple is no matter if you buy the cheap model or you buy the full on expensive model, you're going to have the same build quality, the same assembly, pretty much the same display. What's going to increase is going to be its ability to perform. So a MacBook Air, I use a MacBook Air right here. I have the 15 inch model, exact same laptop, but just 15 inches. And this is going to be great for me for browsing the web, sharing my slides here on this video. It's going to be great for putting together presentations, sending emails, streaming video. And I can get away with photo editing and some light video editing with this laptop. Now, if I'm somebody who wants to get into some intense video editing, I'm going to want to move up to more of the latest M3s in the MacBook Pro series. Uh, that would be high high resolution, uh, maybe 6K video editing, or just very complex 4K video editing. Um, or if I am a motion designer or graphic designer who's, or um, illustrator who's doing a lot of photo, a lot of files inside of Photoshop, lots of layers, but then also somebody who's working in motion design like After Effects. So, but as far as getting the budget friendly entry level MacBook Air, this is great for students or business owners or people who are doing light photography or light creative work. If you have questions, please comment below. Please let me know what the questions are. I want to help you find the best cheap laptop. I don't want you to make a poor purchasing decision. Remember that there are links in the description below. If you use those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And if you want more videos to help you with your buying decision, you can click or tap the screen here. I'll see you in the next video.